What's up guys, my name is Michael and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to go over all of the functions of vector. So I know this is like a thing, I used to have a, a series of, you know, uh, learn data structures in, I don't know, 14 days on on my channel, right? And that was, uh, at that time, I didn't actually go over, like, I didn't actually code, code any of the data structures and that was not actually a good thing. So today I'm actually going to go over every single um, member function for each data structure in C++ for every of the, um, all of the templates. So everything from STL that we could go over. So these are just going to be the basic data structures. You could probably learn it a lot, a lot yourself. You could Google the rest, but I'm going to go over all the values. Okay. Okay. So in this video, I'm just going to go over the vector data structure because this is a pretty, pretty basic data structure. Um, it's kind of like arrays. But uh, in that, the difference between a vector and array is that you could resize it. And resizing is pretty efficient. It's very efficient. And you could change it as much as you want. And you could shrink it as much as you want. And that's what's the best part about vectors. So um, how do you create a vector? Let's open up the Visual Studio. Simply put vector and put a lesson sign. And then do uh, whatever, whatever data type you want. So it could be Boolean. It could be... Uh, char, it could be string, it could be anything, it could be long, long. Me, I'm going to just use integer for now. And let's just call it, uh, I don't know, data. Okay. And uh, what this does is it just creates, initializes a vector. So this is just going to be a vector, which is basically like an array, but that we could resize the size as much as we want. And we don't have to, you know, we don't have to do as much as we think. We don't have to create like a specific size. Okay. Now, let's say you want to, wanted to create a specific size. So let's say I wanted to have only 10. I want to have 10 elements, right? What you would do is you would just put parentheses, the, less, uh, the left parentheses, right parentheses, and then you put 10. And that will create data with have 10 elements, and it's going to be all initialized to 0. And if you want to see if it is all in initialized to 0, all you have to do is just loop. We're going to start from 0, and we'll go to up to... Um, so all vectors always have a function called size, dot size, and you could always use that to find the size of a vector. So you would use uh, the name of the vector that we created, which is data, and then we do dot size. And that's just going to loop over all the values in data, and it's just going to print out every one of them. So here we're going to do C out data at i. And then we save. Um, now if you run this, it's just going to print out all the values of data and it should all have value zero. Ideally, it should have all value zero. Um, let's see. Let's wait. Yeah, see, it has all value zero and it's 10 elements. So, yeah. Um, so that's the good thing about vectors is that if you want to create a specific size, you could just put a parentheses and pass in your size in there. Now, what if I want to change a value in data? So let's say I want to change a value in my vector. Well, it's the same thing as you could access the value in an array. All you have to do is just do data and use, use the name of your vector, right? Data is the name of our vector, right? It's data. But you could change this name to anything that you want. And you just, what you would do is you put whatever index you want it to be. So you would have your left bracket and right bracket, whatever index you want it to be. So let's say I, I want to change the initial index of zero. And I just change it to, I don't know, five, right? So what this does is it's going to change the first value of our data at the index of zero, right? And it's going to change it to five. So then when we loop through everything, it's going to have the first value of five and then the rest are going to be zeros. See, first value five, the rest are zeros. So yeah, and the reason why it's all zero, the rest are zeros is because, uh, remember, whenever you initialize something with a, with a number here, with your size, the initial values of a vector are always going to be zero. Now, let's say we don't want to initialize all the va initial values to be zero. What we could do is we could just put a comma, and then it's going to tell us what value you actually want it to be. So let's say we I want to change it to all have I don't know value five. Okay. Now if you uh, now if you uh, no not five. Let's say one. Okay. Now if you were to run this, it's going to have all the values are going to be one, and it's going to have the first value of data is going to be five. Yep, see, all the values are going to be one, and the first value is going to be five, right? So 
that's what this good part about the vector is that the vector tells you the first value of the vector. The first thing is just the size of our vector. And the second one is the, the number, the number to initialize all the values of our vector, what it would be. So that's the first good parts about vectors. Um, now let's talk about, uh, let's talk about the functions. So we already know the functions of uh, a vector is that we have dot size, which gives us the size of the vector. But uh, there's also a ton of functions that you could use. Um, one of the things you could use is actually you could use um, push, pushback. This is something I use a lot. Basically what a pushback does, it's just going to add a new value to the end of your vector. So what we're going to do now is we are going to actually take this, take this, uh, take this value data, right? And we're going to just add, let's push back to zero. So at the end of this, if I were just to loop through, let's actually comment out this comment. Comment out. Uh, actually, let's just move this uh, print state, print state to the end. So what I did was I just, uh, I just pushed zero to the end of our vector. So what that means, is it's going to add it, attach it to the end of the vector, or the value zero to the end of the vector. So then when we loop through the size, i zero uh, to data dot size, it's just going to print out all the values of the vector. So let's see. Yeah, so, so you have five all ones, and then we have zero which is the value that we just pushed to the back of our vector. Now, um, now let's actually talk about uh, what we could do, the other functions that you could do on a vector. So here, um, I already went over pushback, right? The modifiers pushback. Um, now, uh, what you also could do is you could do pop back. So what this does is deletes the last element of the vector. So if you go on the C++ website, it actually gives you all the functions of the vector. And let's actually just go over all of them. Okay, so first of all, um, we could pop back also. So this is going to remove the last element. So what if I want to remove the last element, uh, so currently our, we have zero at, attached to the last element of our vector. So now if I want to remove this, I'll just remove pop back. And it's going to remove that zero in our last element of our vector. And then if I were to just print it again, so let's actually, let's actually print out a statement before pop back, it's gonna print out. So I'm gonna have a print out the, a statement that says before the pop back, I just print out my array. And then I'm gonna print out this again after the pop back, the pop back, and we're gonna print out the array again. So now if we were to run this, uh, print out the vector again, yeah, my bad. If you run, run this again, let's actually look. So we would have five all ones and then a zero, right? And then after the pop back, we just have five and all ones because it removed the zero at the end of our vector. So yeah, that's how pop back works. Uh, it just removes the last element. Now let's go over the other functions of the, the vector. Okay, so we went over pushback and we went over pop back. Uh, you could actually do an insert. So if you want to see what the insert function does, let's actually open this. Okay, so if you want to insert something, you have to insert the specific position and then the value. Okay, so you have to insert the specific position and the value. Now, how do you do that? Um, there's actually some, there are some, uh, there are some some uh, hints that you could do, examples that you could go look on the website. But basically you would have to have the position of what your iterator is, and then uh, you have to insert the specific value at that position. So um, let's actually not go over insert ye just yet, quite a moment, because we should actually go over the iterator functions. And these iterators actually give you the, posi are actually positions, right? They're iterator positions, and they actually help you um, use these values, right? So let's actually go over iterators first because uh, if 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 you don't know, if you can't use an iterator, then you can't really insert because uh, iter the position is an iterator. So let's actually go over iterators. So um, in C plus plus, 
for vectors, uh, iterators are just like uh, it's kind of like a it's kind of like a pointer pointing to a specific location. So there's always an iterator. Um, there's the, the first iterator you could use is the beginning. So it's just literally just something that it's an iterator that points to the beginning, and then you could use it. So what normally people do is that they actually create an iterator. They start at the beginning, and then while it's not equal to the end, they increase it. So yeah, we're going to do that. So here, what we could do, instead of uh, using indexing from 0 to the size, we'll, if you want to print it using iterators, here's what you would use. Um, so normally you could use auto, but uh, for our sake purposes, we're not going to use that for now. We're actually going to use the actual uh, standard template library of iterators. So we're going to do this, right? And let's actually call in the our iterator, um, I don't know, my iterator, uh, it. Yeah. And it's going to, what we're going to do is we're going to create our iterator and then we're going to point it to um, the beginning. Okay, so what this does is that it basically just creates a, a, a object called iterator, and it's going to point it to the beginning of our 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 vector, right? It's going to point it to the beginning of our vector, and um, what we're, th this beginning function is just an iterator that basically for every vector they always have something that you could get from the beginning value, right? So now we're we're what we're doing is that we're just replacing this. Um, Instead of indexing, we're going to use iterators. So if you go back to the example, uh, what you could do is uh, you could use a for loop, and then you point your iterator to the beginning, and then while it's not equal to the end of our vector, our vector dot end, we just pre-increment it by it. So let's actually take this, put it over here. So this is going to create an iterator from the beginning, and then while we're we're going to do is we're going to do it is not equal to data dot end. And then we're going to do plus plus i, uh, plus plus it. OK, so um, it is not equal to end. We're going to plus plus it. Um, I think my laptop might die soon. Yeah, it's OK. Uh, now what we're going to do is we are going to do something called, because an iterator class is basically a pointer if, uh, of pointing to the beginning of the uh, pointing to the whatever position it is in the vector. Um, we you could actually you dereference this, right? So we're, what we're going to do is dereference the it, and then this is just going to dereferencing means that we get the data that it's pointing to. So that's what the star does. So once we have the star it, it's just going to get the data that it's pointing to. So it's just going to, it's just literally just going to print out all the values here, right? And then uh, we could do the same thing. Let's just copy this and do the same thing after the popback because it's literally just printing out the values. And then you can run it. So we're going to run this, and um, yeah, it should have exactly the same output. Wait, okay, yeah, so 5511110 and then 51111. Okay, so before the popback, we had a zero at the end. After the popback, we don't have it anymore. Okay, so that's basically the first part of an iterator. You have a function for and your vector, basically, it has an iterator pointing to the beginning and it has one to the end. And you could also increment the iterator, and then every time you increment it, you could print out whatever value it is. Okay. Now uh, let's go over the next, the next, um, uh, next uh, iterator. Uh, let's go back. Okay, so we have beginning and we have the end. Um, you could also print reverse um, from backwards to forwards, and uh, to do that you have something called R begin. So let's actually go over R begin. Um, so what this does is it's like a reverse iterator. You go from back. Uh, backwards to forwards and um yeah you just you literally just go backwards to forwards so if i want to print from backwards i'm going to do um iterator to r r begin so it's just going to go from the end uh oh yeah it has to be called reverse iterator 
So it's weird because it has to be called reverse iterator. And then this is going to be um, Rn. And this is, what this does now, it's just going to print backwards. So yeah, uh, it's going to increment the iterator and it's going to print backwards. Uh, we could also do this R begin, R end. It's going to be called reverse iterator. Yep. So now um, the first part is going to have the, the last element is going to be zero, all ones, five. And the second one after the pop back, it's going to be just all ones and then five. So yeah, here printing it backwards, we have zero, all ones, five. After the pop back, it's going to be all ones and then five. The reason why it's like this is because we're printing backwards for both of them. Okay, so that's your reverse iterator. All right, uh, let's go over the next function. So we're here we're, today, we're going to go over all the functions. So we had R begin, R end, we have begin, end. Now we need, uh, let's look at C, C begin. So this is just a constant iterator. Um, what this does is that you can't really change it, I believe. Uh, constant iterator points the beginning of it. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so what this does is it just means that you can't change any of it. Um, I believe that to the first uh, point, so constant, constant, this iterator can be increased or decreased unless itself is constant. So I get a return, but it cannot be used to modify the contents. Okay, so what this means is that uh, I can't actually use this iterator and change, modify the array, and the, the vector, modify the vector. I could only use this to print things. So um, the good part about iterators is that you could actually change whatever value you want it to be. So like if I want to change the beginning value, um, let's go back, let's go back to here. Let's actually create an iterator and point it to the begin value. So the first element, um, right. I could actually change this by dereferencing it, the first element, and I just change it to, I don't know, seven or something, right? So then now remember, uh, we had five in the first value. Right now, then after this change, we could actually change it to seven. So um, remember uh, here, actually, let's not use seven. Uh, let's actually use five. So remember here in the uh, in the initial part, I changed the first value to become five. Now let's actually use it in iterator to change that. So I'm gonna actually take this, uh, it's and I will just replace it. So this is how you would change it. You create an iterator object, you point it to the beginning. And then you just dereference it. You, you get the data that it's pointing to and you just set equal to five. And that's basically the same thing as uh, doing it before. So right now it's just gonna be print out the same thing, except we didn't use our brackets to change our value. We use iterators. So if you look at this, it's gonna be, wait for it. Yeah, so because we, uh, last time we were printing out backwards. Yeah, uh, yeah, but anyway, we have zeros, all ones, and then five at the end because we're printing out backwards. And then here we have all ones and then five at the end because we're printing out backwards. But yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's the thing that you could do with iterators. You could change the specific content at it that it's pointing to. That's a good part about iterators. Um, if you wanna change like, I don't know, the fifth position of your iterator, which, uh, or seventh position, I don't know. What you would do is you would have your iterator pointed to the beginning and you just add it by whatever position you want it to be, so by plus seven. That's going to change the seventh element to become five. So uh, let's actually not print backwards anymore because that's this is actually kind of confusing. So let's remove R begin and R end. And let's instead of reverse iterator, we're just going to use regular iterator. It was too confusing. I don't like printing backwards. Yeah. Okay. So here, what we're going to have is that it's uh, we have all values of ones except the seventh position is going to have a Five. Yeah. So here we have all values of ones and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, the eighth position, my bad. Eighth position. It's gonna have a five. Oh, actually, yeah, no, the seventh position is gonna have five, but then because we added a zero, there's it's the eighth position. Yeah, we have the seventh position is gonna have five, and then in the end we added a zero, so that's why it's there's a there's zero there. So yeah. And then uh, here the seventh position is gonna have five. Wait, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Actually, maybe it's eighth position. It might be the eighth position, actually. Let's actually get rid of the uh, pushing the zero back to the end. So let's actually get rid of 
I'll get rid of this stuff. Uh, you guys don't understand pushback and popback already, so let's actually get rid of that. Um, I th let's just see what this prints out. I believe it should change the seventh position, or it could be the eighth position. We'll see. Okay. Um, hold up. So, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so it's the index at the seventh position becomes changes to five. Okay, yeah. So he, what this does is it changes the index at the seventh position is going to become five. That's what it does. Um, so it's the same thing as doing like data at index at seven changes to five. That's what, that's what, uh, this is basically essentially the same thing as this. Okay, so that's that. Um, so uh, that was like the whole spiel of iterators, right? Um, of changing an element. So going back to const iterators, these you can't change them at all. So I can't actually do like a star iterator and change whatever position to become five, six, or seven, or negative. So let's actually use a const iterator. So here we have, uh, I believe, like a const, yeah, here, const iterator. And then we're gonna call this C begin and then C end. And it's just going to just print out the same elements. So yeah, let's just open this. Uh, wait. Yeah, so it's just the same thing. We just one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so it just, it just prints out all the values. Yeah, that's what a considerator does. So it's just pretty, pretty cool. It just means that, like, you can't change any of it. Uh, there's also a const reverse iter iterator. Yeah, so this means that you can't change any of the contents of your, your vector, but it's constant and it's the same thing. Um, so it just allows you to print backwards. So it's gonna be like uh, const underscore reverse iterator. So it's got, I think it's, what do they call it? CR begin, CR begin, CR begin, CR begin. So this is just gonna print out all the values backwards. Okay. So um, hold up, hold up. Let's run it. It's just gonna print out all the values backwards. So we're gonna have a bunch of ones and then five. Yeah, so you have two ones and then all fives. Uh, one five and then all ones. So that's what it does. Uh, so yeah, that means this constant. So use this const iterators if you're not actually gonna change any specific value. So that's a good part of it. Um, so yeah, we, we, we went over all these already. So we have our begin, our end, our begin. Okay, so we went over all the iterators. Okay, so now because we went over all the iterators, let's actually use, uh, let's actually use, yeah, okay. Um, let's actually use, now do insert. Okay, so we have insert. So now now that we talked about iterators, um, if you want to insert at something at a specific position, you just have to just, uh, insert at the iterator's position plus a certain position. So um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Okay. So if we look at this template, if I want to insert a specific position, um, here what you could do is you could, there's three, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four. Okay. There's, there's three functions you, functions you could use. Uh, oh, wow. Now you could actually use more than that. C11, you could use more than that. You know, one, two, three, four, five. There's five functions you could use. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. So the first one you could use that you insert is you insert at a certain position and then the certain value you want to insert at. So let's say, uh, so like, so here, remember we had an iterator pointing at data dot begin plus seven, right? So this is at the seventh position. We want to change it to five. Right uh, now, instead of changing the the position seventh position to five, let's actually just insert a, a a number at the third position or something. So what this does, it might it's gonna like insert the element before at a certain position, and then it's gonna increase the size by the, how many elements you're inserting. So currently we have. Um, what this did with what currently what we have is like 
a vector with all ones. And then we just change the seventh position to five. So if I'm going to insert a something, let's say, uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. Let's say, let's say I'm going to insert something at the seventh position, right? Uh, I don't know, nine. Uh, what this does is it's going to in increase uh, insert whatever value before the seventh position. So it's going to insert nine before the seventh position. So now what we're what we're going to have is we're going to have eleven elements in our data vector. So then when we print this out, oh, let's not actually print reverse because uh, that's this is super annoying. Um, so what you could do in C plus plus new new C plus plus if you don't want to specify the vector constant iterate, you could just use auto. So that's a good cool thing. So let's actually not print out backwards. So yeah, here we're going to use constant iterator and we're just not going to print out backwards. So what this does is it's going to insert at the insert nine at right before the seventh position. So now if we go back here and we print out and we print out, we run it. Um, here, right? So we initially we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, zero, one, two, okay, we have it's indexed at zero. So we have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it inserted nine right at the before the seventh position. So the seventh position originally was five, right? See this five, but then it inserted a nine before it, right? So remember in our previous code above here, we changed the seventh position to have value five. So now what here it does is it, it, it's going to insert the value nine right before the seventh position. So data.begin plus seven. So remember data.begin is just the starting starting position of our vector of data. So we plus seven, that's the seventh position indexed. Okay, so now we have this part. Um, uh, my bad. Okay, so we have insert. Uh, you could also insert a certain number of elements. That's a, a, we could go over that also. Um, so we could actually fill up, let's say I want to fill up like five, uh, I don't know, three nines, okay? So what I could do is I could insert three nines and then it's going to insert three nines before the seventh position. So if we run it again, boom. Now we have three nines that's inserted before the seventh position. So in our vector, three nines will be inserted before our seventh position. So that's the second function of fill. Um, okay, you, you also could do a range. So, uh, so what this does is it's going to, um, let's see, uh, you could fill out a range and it's going to copy the the specific range of elements in the range between first and last at your other positions, and it's going to insert that into your current uh, current current um, array of your position that you want to insert. So it, it, this is like only useful. This third function is only useful if you want to copy some other element from another. Um, another, I don't know, another array. So uh, another vector. So here, what we could do is uh, if you want to do like a copy data, let's say I have like, I don't know, sixes, right? Uh, let's say I have, I don't know, three, three sixes. Okay. So here, the first part, remember the first part is the size. And then the second part is the number that you want to insert it as. So we have copy data. <coughs> Excuse me. Copy data is going to have Three sixes. That's what's going to have three sixes. Okay. Now, um, what we're going to do is we are going to basically just point um, those three sixes of copy data, and we're going to replace that, insert it at a, our old value of data. So here, if I want to, I don't know, um, insert data dot insert. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, let's say we insert at the seventh position, right? Data insert. We're going to ins insert at the seventh position and we are going to basically just copy 
all the values of our, our copy data vector, our new vector of copy data of sixes, so copy data dot end. So what you do here is you pass in the, um, you input the, the uh, you input the, the two begin and the end. Yeah, so you input the begin and the end, which is like, the, these are the positions of your old, uh, your old vector that you want to copy the the contents of the old va uh, the contents of the old values you want to copy into your into the new ones so here the old contents we're going to copy is the three sixes and we're going to copy into our the seventh position of our data array so in here it's just going to have three sixes going to be copied at the seventh position so now we have three nines and then three sixes at the seventh position so it's going to look kind of weird but uh yeah so now we should have, yeah. So here we have all ones, right? Um, the seventh position had a five, but then we inserted three nines before it. And then after that, we copied six, uh, we copied the three sixes from our other vector of copy data into our initial vector of data. So that's why we have three sixes before the three nines. Okay, so that's what that does. Um, I think that's all of that. Uh, should we go over the new ones? Okay, so now here you have const iterator. So it's basically just, it's just it's, these new functions are just the same thing. Uh, so the two new, two other new functions, um, yeah, it's just literally the same thing, except this is constant. So you could pass in like a const iterator so that a position that you don't want to change. And then here you got, it could also pass an initializer list. So, um, and we could do that. Okay. So let's say I wanted to pass in like a list of elements. So yeah, I'm going to get rid of this copy data and I'm going to get rid of this also, uh, inserting the three nines. So let's say I want to insert like a, a list of elements at the seventh position. So here, remember we changed the seventh position to have five, but now I'm going to insert a certain number of a new list into the right before the seventh position. So to do that, I'm going to do data dot insert, and then I'm going to do data dot c begin, which is like a const position, a const iterator, const iterator position, which is this, which this points to the first const iterator to the first element. So that's what it does. And then um, I could just pass in a list of values I want to insert before the seventh position. So I could do like a one, two, three, four, five, six. And then it's going to insert one, two, three, four, five, six before the seventh position. And uh, yeah, let's see what it prints out. Yeah, so here, oh wow, it's actually kind of strange. Uh, oh no, yeah, oh, whoops, my bad. I didn't I didn't do it at the seventh position. I inserted it at the beginning. Um, so the data dot C begin is a const iterator point to the beginning. Let's actually insert it at the seventh position, so plus seven. So now what it should do is it should insert one, two, three, four, five, six at the seventh, right before the seventh position. So now I have a bunch of ones. Then we, right before the seventh position of, that has a value five, it inserts one, two, three, four, five, six. And then the seventh position that we changed to have five is still there, so it's five. Okay, so that's what it does. So yeah, that's inserting a list of elements. So that's this fourth function, uh, fifth function. So we went over all the inserts. Um, also more inserts you could go over. Uh, no, actually, I think that, that's it. Okay, so you could do the exact same thing with, with erase also. Um, I don't want to like go over that part also. Uh, oh wait, there's actually fewer, fewer, yeah, there's actually fewer things you could do. Okay, so what you could do is you could erase at a const iterator position. So let's say I want to erase the seventh element. So here we change the seventh, uh, seventh element to have five, right? Of this iterator. And let's say I just want to remove that. So let's actually go here. What we're going to do is we're going to do data erase. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use um, data.c begin, right? The const iterator. And let's remove the seventh position. And then what this does is it's going to change. So here we change the seventh position to have five. Now we just removed it. So now it's just going to have all ones. 
and it should only be nine elements. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, nine elements, and they just have all ones. So that's what the erase does. That's this function of erase. We just pass in a position. You want to erase. Um, you also could do remove a certain like two positions of your starting or last, but it's not including the last, right? So we have first and last. You could pass in the two positions that you want to remove, the range that you want to remove, but it doesn't. It's not including the last. So let's say I want to remove. Um, I don't know the second position up to uh, up to the fifth position, but not including the fifth position. So what this does is it's going to remove all, all the elements between two to four. It's not going to remove the fifth position. So this is going to remove all the elements at the position of two to four and not going to remove the fifth. So here, what we're going to have is we're going to have, uh, let's actually see what it does. It's just going to remove all the ones. So, okay. So initially we changed the seventh position at five. So we have one, two, three, four, five, right? But then now we removed all the values. Well, let's actually print before the remove. Okay. So we have here before the erase. Here, we're going to print out after the erase. after the erase. So we have before the erase and then after the erase. Um, uh, so before the erase, we have one, uh, one all, all ones in the seventh position. Uh, we, zero, one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, had five, right? And then after the erase, it removed the values between two and four. So zero, one, two, three, four. So these three ones were gone. So then all we have left is one, 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 five, one, one. So one, 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 five, one, one. So yeah, that's what it does. Um, yeah, so that's what it does. That's what this erase does. Um, let's see, do I have, how much battery do I have left? Oh yeah, 10 minutes racing. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, you also could swap. So, uh, what the hell is it? it exchanges the contents of X with another content size may differ. Um, so what this does is it swaps the, wait, actually, wait, wait, what, what, what does this have? Okay, okay, so it just swaps the two contents. So like, let's say I have, okay, let's actually use this example. Let's say I have uh, three 100 value, uh, three, three values of 100, and then five values of 200. If I just swap them, then what we're going to have is five values of 200, and then three values of 100. So let's just actually use this example. So let's create both of these, let's copy both of these. So let's get rid of these. Let's actually get rid of all this. So here we have, um, yeah, crap, my battery's low. Uh, yeah, okay, so here we have three 100s and five 200s. And if I were just to print out both of them, um, uh, yeah, this is a way to print out print out a way faster way to print out values. Uh, so we have foo and then we have uh, bar, right? So here we're gonna print out foo and then print out bar. These are two elements, these two vectors. So we have one that has three 100s and the second one has five 200s, right? So we have three 100s so one, two, three, one hundreds, right? And the second one is has five two hundreds. So now if we were to do foo dot swap bar and we 
So now if you were to do foo.swap bar, and then we reprint all the values again, you should be able to have, uh, it should be swapped. So now, um, yeah, okay. So let's actually print out new lines because this is too crowded. Okay, so yeah, so before foo had three one hundreds and bar had five two hundreds. Now that we swapped both of the contents, foo has five two hundreds and bar has three one hundreds. So basically, the two contents of the vectors were swapped. So that's what this swap function does. So that's that. Um, I think we went over. Okay, so we did erase, we did insert, we did swap. Uh, you could clear, okay. So here it actually just clear, removes all elements from the vector, leaving with the vector with the size zero. So let's actually go back to foo and bar. So here we print out foo. Now let's actually get rid of bar. So I'm gonna here get rid of bar. Okay, so Let's, so we have, right now we have three 100s, right? Three 100s in our vector foo. Now let's do foo.clear. This is just going to remove all values of the, in our vector foo. So now it's just gonna be all have nothing. So here we have three 100s, right? In foo, now it's just all nothing. So that's what clear does. It just completely removes everything. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, now let's look at um, construct and insert. Okay, so we could do in place. Um, so this is a way that inserts the new element at the position. Um, so it's it's not the same thing as, in place is different than insert in that uh, in place actually inserts it at the position. It doesn't insert it before it. So that's the thing. Um, yeah, so let's actually use their example here. Um, if I have like 10, 20, 30, so let's create a vector. Let's call it data. Okay. So, uh, I forgot to mention this. If you could also, also initialize your vectors in a list format. So we have like, we could do 10, 20, 30. So what you would use is you would use these uh, braces, kind of like how we use these braces normally. And you just, you set your data equal to this. Uh, braces and then whatever element you want it to be. So that initializes it to 10, 20, 30. So now let's say I want to insert it at the first position, 100. I'm going to do a m place. So here's what I'll do data dot m place. And then let's do data dot begin plus first position and then let it insert 100. So here let's actually do a, let's actually print all the values of data. So printing Okay, so we're gonna print all values before and then print all values after. So here's before printing, after printing. Okay. So now if we were to print it, um yeah, okay, so here, before we had 10, 20, 30, now we're, uh, after we do an in place, we insert it at the first position. So here the first position was um, uh, 0, 1. So the first position at the index of 0, 1 is 20, right? So then what it, does, what it did was it actually, uh, it actually inserted at the position of 0, 1, so here at 20, it's uh, it just inserted 100 at 20. So right, uh, yeah, right at this position of 20. So then it, it has 10, 100, 20, 30. So that's what it does. Um, I believe, yeah, so it inserts a new element at the position. This element is constructed in place using args. Okay, so it's different than the insert, in place is different than insert, and that insert, uh, 
uh, inserts new elements before the position. Yeah, so that's the difference. In place is different because it inserts it at the position, a new element at the position. All right, um, there's also in place back. So this inserts a new element at the end of the vector right after its current last element. Um, yeah, this is just going to, I think it's the same thing as pushback. I think so. Oh, but you could pass some arguments. Okay, so that's a good thing. Um, I think in pushback, you can't do that. Let's see. Yeah, okay, so pushback, you only could add one element at a time. In placeback, you could actually add multiple. So uh, let's actually go to our vector. So remember, you could, let's get rid of, uh, actually, let's keep this. Um, so we have 10, 20, 30. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to do in place back. So let's say I want to add 40 at the end. We do in place back 40, right? And if we print it, which should have 10, 20, 30, 40. Yeah, so inserted 40 at the end. So what you also could do is you could do this. You insert multiple values. You could insert 40, 50, 60, 70. So this is a difference than pushback because, oh, wait. Wait, wait, you can't do it? Well, it says you could. Arcs. I guess you can't. That's weird. Okay, I think it's the same thing as pushback. Insert element at the end, insert a new element right, right, right after its current last position. This is going to show you in place using arcs. Okay, so I guess you can't. Um, that's kind of weird. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So you can't. You can't actually do this. My fault. Um, so it's basically like pushback. The only difference between so you only could in place back. You only could insert like one element at a time. You can't just insert all of them. But um, my fault. Uh, basically. It's the same thing as pushback, but pushback copies or moves an existing element into the container. And placeback just does a reallocation, I think. Uh, I don't think it copies anything. I don't know. Uh, let's actually look up the difference between, between pushback and placeback. I'm sure there's like some time differences. Okay, so uh okay, so you could actually make oh you could take a Yeah, so here you could definitely pass arguments, that's what I thought. Place Okay, so yeah. Difference is that one you one copies the other one just the well, other one actually moves it. So call in place back AR car call pushback does both of them. Okay, so yeah. Um that's the difference. So I think in place back might be faster actually. Okay, so we finished all of this. Uh let's actually look at this sign. I never actually looked at this before. Okay, so Oh, this is a weird function. I never looked at this before. You can actually assign values. Um, add an iterator. Okay, so here you could you could actually assign your input copy that you want to copy values to, and just assign them into your new new uh, vector. Um, so it actually replaces its current contents and modifies its size. Okay, so like. That's kind of cool. Um, so so let's let's actually do that. Uh, let's go to data dot assign, and let's actually let's go over. Let's actually use all these functions. Okay. So the first one is the copies of first position, the last position of another vector. So we got, we could actually do that. So we could do int copy data. Let's create like 40, 50. So let's actually assign. Uh, what do I want to do? 
Yeah, well, let's just see what it does, okay? Uh, we're gonna assign copy data of 40, the values in copy data from the first beginning to the end. And it's just gonna assign it to our data vector. So it should give us, uh, let's actually see what it gives us. I'm kind of confused. Oh, wow, it actually just replaces it. So yeah, it just replaced it with 40 and 50. Oh, that's weird. So yeah, this just copies the values over from your old array to your new one. Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah, you, oh yeah, you could also assign like a new list, I guess. So uh, let's say, so that was this first function, just passing in like the two positions, iterator positions that you wanted to pass from your old vector to your new one. You also could pass in size you could fill this up so like uh let's, okay let's actually do before and then after um okay so we have before after I just assign it with all values of like let's say five values and then have all 100s or something so this new vector should just have five values and all values of um, yeah, so we initially have 10, 20, 30. Afterwards, it's just five values, all the values 100. So that's what it does. Um, you can also assign a list. That's cool. Um, okay, so here, what we're going to do, I'd say I want to assign like a list of values. I could do this, put a list, and do like one, two, three, four, five. And then what this does is before it had 10, 20, 30, now it has one, two, three, four, five. So the function data.assign. So 10, 20, 30, and it has one, two, three, four, five. So that's that's cool. Uh, I think that was that's it. Yeah. So we the first one, first function assign just passes in your two positions at your old array that you want to copy to your new one. The second one just wants you to replace uh, the size of the number of elements you want to put, and then replace it with like the new value contents you want it to have. And the third way you do it is just assign it with like a list of elements that you want to change it to. So that's what this vector assign does. So now we have went over assign, pushback, popback, insert, erase, swap, clear, and place, and place back. Um, I think we went over most of them. Okay. Uh, is there a constructor? Okay. So, okay. Uh, we could go over all the constructors. I think we actually went over that. Basically, you could actually just... Um, so yeah, let's actually go over all the constructors. Uh, of our vector. So by default, if we just created our vector before of data, right? Uh, so let's actually, I'll, I'll, I'll delete everything. So let's say I have data and I put nothing. It's just going to initialize data with like uh, the default constructor. It's just going to have nothing in here, right? Um, that's this first thing. Uh, the second one is if it's... Uh, want to fill it in with certain values with the size size of n or with uh, some allocator um, so that's the one that when we went over like if I want to fill this vector like five with like 100 right so now I would have five elements and it's all values of 100 so that's the second one um, uh, you could have to the const type okay uh, you, you, okay, so here one, you could actually pass in the range of your old, old, um, old, uh, old vector that you want to copy over. So let's say I have like old, uh, let's say I have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. And then I want to copy, I don't know, this previous and next into it. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do like old up again dot end and then if I were to print out my data it should have one two three four okay uh, let's just wait let's just wait let's wait yeah so now it just has like one two three four so it just copied 
all the positions of your old vector uh, begin and end and copies into your new value of data. You also could do like, I don't know if you want to start at like a fifth position. I mean, the first position, the end, so you're skipping the one. So I have two, three, four. Yeah, you could do that also. So they're just positions of your old. So you now you have two, three, four. These are just like positions of your old uh, old vector you want to copy over. So we have that. Um, I think that's it. So we have, the, we have so that was this. Um, okay, so that's this one, the range. Uh, okay, you could also just copy, you literally could just copy the old vector. So here, here, if I just want to copy the old vector, I just pass in the old vector, and it just copies it to have one, two, three, four. So now my data is just going to have one, two, three, four. Yeah. So you could do that also. You just pass in the old vector. Um, cons allocator type. Oh, you could actually explicitly put the allocator type. That's cool. Uh, yeah. Okay. So here you, you could actually pass in like the size of how many you want to copy. Uh, I don't want to go over that. I don't see, like, what's the point of that? Um, I think that's the gist of it. Oh, you could actually move. Oh no. Okay. So we have copy, just passing it. Uh, here you could also just pass in like the type you want to put. Uh, that's pretty, pretty much the gist of it. Oh, you could also like just copy like a, a list. So like if I want to do like data at like I don't know one two three four five six seven seven eight nine ten right and now the data is just gonna have seven eight nine ten and I just put it in a list format seven eight nine ten yeah that's cool you could do that oh uh, yeah that's pretty much the gist of it it's all the constructors. Okay, so we went over constructors. Um, equal sign, we could use, we could talk about the equal sign. This just, it just literally just copies all the values into the equal sign. Um, yeah, so like if I have like old values of one, two, three, four, and, I, and my data has like seven, eight, nine, ten, and I want to copy data, I want to just copy all the old values, the new ones. I would do is I uh, create in my new one. I just set equal to it. And now when I print it out, so here let's see before copy with an equal sign. Let's do after copy. So here we have one two three four. Oh, it's seven eight nine. So we have seven eight nine ten. And then after copy, it has one, two, three, four. So if you really want to copy easy way, just use equal sign. Um, yeah, so that's that. Uh, I think that's it. All right, so we went over equals. Uh, destructor doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, you can't really, if you really want to destroy it, you can, but this calls a destroy. Okay, I mean, if you really want to, uh, that it's just like a way of just clearing everything of data. So let's say I want to, instead of copy, I'm going to get rid of before or after. I just want to kill it. So like clear everything. I just do this, call in data. I think that's what I did. Did I already? Oh yeah, okay. Kill it, data, and then put, put this. I can't even call it. Yeah. I don't even think you could use this. Destroy on each of the key allocates. I don't, I don't even think they allow you to do this. Oh, okay. No, yeah, I don't even think you can. Wait. Oh, okay. No. Yeah, they don't even let you call it. Okay, whatever. It's basically just like clearing. Uh, you can't use it for some reason. Actually, can you? Okay, let's actually look that up. Calling destructor after C++. 
No, yeah, you can't. You can't even do it. It's better just to like use clear. So, yeah. Okay. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know why that's there. All right. So we went over constructor equals begin and r begin all the iterators. Okay. Um, we went over all the modifiers. Okay, we could do capacity. That's fine. Okay, uh, remember we did dot size that gets the size of it. Uh, we could also do max underscore size, which literally just returns the max size. I don't even know that because the max size is like in the compile. Excuse me, in the compiler. So um, we have before. We're gonna print out all that. Uh, let's just okay. Let's just have data. Let's just print out data dot. Uh, max underscore size let's see what this does i don't even know what this is so the maximum size we have seven eight nine ten maximum size might be uh oh wow okay it's like a maximum size you have in your vector could be like 10 million or something that's good to know okay okay yeah that just prints it out um you don't even need it technically. Oh, you can resize it. That's cool. Um, yeah, okay. So let's say I have like an empty vector and then I have like values of one to 10. Uh, I could resize it to have five. So let's actually do that. Okay, so let's say I have this vector uh, data. And I'm just gonna do this push back data so now I have values of 1 to uh, 1 to 10 now if I want to resize it let's do resize 5 and then I print out it should have um only only five values yeah so yeah so here before it had one to ten now it has only one to five so this just resizes just shrinks the vector to the first few elements um yeah uh you also could yeah so if n is smaller than the current size it reduces it to the first n elements so it removes the ones beyond it if n is greater than it it expands it by inserting as many elements reach to size okay so okay if it's greater than capacity reallocates okay so um yeah so like let's say i want to resize it to like So here initially we had 10 elements of 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we could actually print that. So here we have before. And here we have after resize. Okay, so let's say let's say it was greater than 10, let's say we have 20, let's say we're resize 20 elements, we have 60 now. So what this does is it's going to keep adding 60 to the end until we reach 20 elements. See? So initially we had one to 10 elements before. After I resize it to 20, it's gonna add, keep adding 60 to the end of the, the, uh, the vector until I reach 20 elements. So that's what it does. So yeah, that's what this, the first value is the the size that you want to resize it to. The second value is the, the value you want to keep adding it to be. So yeah, so if your value is greater than it, it's going to just keep adding until you reach the size. Okay, so we have resize uh, capacity. Is that the same thing as dot size? Yeah, so this is like an internal storage type of thing. Okay, uh, so after 10, let's actually print out data.capacity. I don't know what this is actually. So I push back 10 elements. 
Odd sides would give me 10. Let's look at the capacitor. Okay, so it's 13. So it's just like a bit of over the dot size, the number of L actual L elements. So yeah. Um, yeah, you probably never need this. It's, it's not the actual like real size. Um, okay, uh, you could do empty, which checks if it's empty or not. All right, this is good. You wanna see like if it's empty. So if I wanna print out uh, So if I say if data dot if it's empty, then I say yes, empty otherwise no. Okay, so here we have uh Yeah, it should be no, not yeah, it's not empty. Not empty. Okay, so what? So here we had ten elements added into the vector data. Uh, then we just checked if it's empty. Then we say yes, empty. Otherwise, not empty. So because it already has ten elements that we push back, it's definitely not empty. So yeah. So that's why I print out not empty. So this function empty just checks if it's actually empty or not. Okay. Um, is that all the fun values? Okay, uh, reserve, you don't want to use this actually. Okay, so reserve is just saying that, hey, give me, make sure that I have 10, like you could fit a certain number of elements in this capacity. So like in our vector of data, if I do like data dot reserve, 100, this just means that, hey, make sure I could put 100 elements in the data. It's kind of the same thing as doing this, except it's not assigning zeros to 100 elements. So yeah, that's what reserve does. Um, did we go over shrink to fit? Okay, I think that's the same thing as resize. Okay, so this just reduces the capacity to the fit size um ideally you don't want to use this okay so okay that's super weird um yeah okay you i don't know um Yeah, okay, so this just changes the capacity. Okay, so let's just type this up. Let's actually copy this. So here what they had was they initially have a vector and they initialize it with 100 elements, right? So then it has 100 elements and they're all zeros. So the capacity they print out is just going to be the capacity of how many, which is like the it's not the actual size. It's like just a little bit greater than the actual size dot size function. So it's like in a vector, they under the hood, they under the hood, they want to make sure it's not like you don't get too over bounds out of bounds. Right. So they just have a little bit, their capacity is just a little bit above the size. So here, if we print it out, let's see what happens. Okay, so here the capacity of our vector is 100, right? Because we initialized to our, the size of our vector is gonna have 100. So now what they do is they resize to 10, but the capacity is still at 100, right? Because um, resize just changes the, the size to be uh, 10 elements, right? But it doesn't change like the actual capacity, what's under the hood like the storage that you could actually have in your vector. So like what it's saying is like, hey, I resized the 10 elements, but the capacity of my vector is still 100, right? So it just means like, hey, you could just, you have 90 more you could use, right? Now, if you do shrink to fit, it's just gonna change the capacity variable to now have only 10. So that's what the shrink to fit does. It actually shrinks the capacity 
of a vector to be have be after resizing. So that's pretty good if you want to use capacity. I generally just use size, so I don't really care. Um, okay, so we went over constructor, destructor equals, went over iterators, um, went over capacity, uh, element axis. Okay, so yeah, we could do that. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, oh, that's super weird. Okay. All right, so you know how to access an, uh, a vector already. Like, let's say I have vector data one, two, three, four. Um, so if I want to get something out of position, I use these brackets, right? Zero, and I just set it to like, I don't know, three. Uh, I don't know, 100. So what this does is it's just going to, let me just print out. Uh, set the first elements we have 100, right? So the first element is 100 and the rest is 2, 3, 4. Now, um, yeah, so the brackets, the operator brackets just allows you to access whatever at the current position. So the current index. So here at the zeroth index, zero. So vectors are the same as arrays. It, and, and it starts at like index zero, right? So the first position is zero, but um, yeah. So at the position zero, it has changes to 100. So that's a brackets. Um, you could use, instead of using the brackets operator, you could also use uh, at. This is super weird. I don't know why people would do this, but if you really want to, you could do dot at, at certain position equals it. So it just, returns a reference to the element at a certain position. Um, yeah. Uh, can I actually change it? Returns element. Yeah, okay, so it just access it. So I could do like date, instead of doing at zero, I could do dot at zero set equal to hundred and it should do the same thing if I don't want to use the brackets yeah it's the same thing 100 200 so yeah that's what the at is um there's also two functions called front and back so if I push back uh, dot front is just uh so unlike the actual it's basically the same thing as begin, vector dot begin, but the difference is that begin is an iterator, but this one actually returns a reference. So like I could do like, I could do data dot front, and then like minus a hundred. So I don't have to do like the star pointer thing, right, where it's pointing at. So this is going to take one minus hundred, so it's negative ninety nine. So yeah, I could actually legit change that, um, and I think that concludes it. And there's also back. So it's return of reference. Yeah, this returns a direct reference. So I could do back, and it actually just minus equals one hundred will remove and subtract four minus one hundred. And minus 96 so yeah that's what it does but yeah um minus back uh there's also data oh what's so so weird oh what that's pretty cool okay um so vectors are actually have are implemented using an array also so you could actually get the point, the date, the array reference if you really want to. So here, data is one, two, three, four, right? Uh, I could do, okay, let's actually change it to my vector. Could not be super crazy. Uh, I could do, so what I could do is I could do my vector dot data. And this is going to get the array form. So I could do like uh, my array. And then I could actually just give it to equal to this. Uh, it has to be a pointer. Damn. So, okay. So I could do this. Yeah. So this gives me the, 
Okay, so this actually gives me the... Sorry, there's people outside screaming. There's actually people... This actually gives me the vector form of the array form. So it converts the vector to an array form. And it does a pointer. Waiting. So here, if I, I could actually... Uh, um, yeah, I don't want to... Okay, uh, so what I could do is I could go through 0 to 4 and just print out my array. And then I could do... Uh, yeah, I could actually just print out. And it's just going to print out 1, 2, 0, 0, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. But this is an array form now. So yeah, it's a pointer to the array. It should print out, yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's pretty crazy. That's pretty cool. So yeah, um, I think that was, that's, that's all we have for everything you need to know about vectors. So those are all the functions. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later. Peace out.